Great Lakes here. Today in the Great Lakes kitchen, we've got an exciting new piece of equipment. This is something that I've been wanting to get for years, and I finally went ahead and bought one. You know, the first jobs that I ever had were working in restaurants, and I always really enjoyed using the great big flat top grill. There's just certain things that you can make, or certain things that you can make much more easily when you have that great big griddle to work with. Now I've used some outdoor small griddles, like the kind that you can get for a camp chef stove. And this stove that I have actually came with one of those useless, narrow cast iron griddles that's good for approximately nothing. But not since I worked in those restaurants, I don't know, more than 25 years ago, have I used one of the great big full-sized flat tops. And so now I finally can once again. So I did a lot of research before I bought one. I looked at a lot of different brands and styles and I ended up going with one made by a company called Steel Made. Made in America from American products. They've got a great reputation and a really cool product lineup. They make flat tops for your range inside, for your grills, even for electric stoves. I got the ordinary normal one for a full size kitchen gas range. And in this video, we're gonna do an unboxing, set the whole thing up, and go through all the steps to season it as recommended by the manufacturer's instructions. And as part of the seasoning process, we're gonna be frying up an absolute mountain of thick cut bacon. I don't know exactly how this is gonna go. I haven't used one of these flat tops in a long time, so I'm gonna follow all the instructions for setup and seasoning, and we're gonna get this thing going. While it's no surprise, considering this thing is basically a giant slab of stainless steel, the steel made flat top is very heavy and weighs in at a hefty 30 pounds. Considering that, I would have expected it to be shipped in a sturdier box. Right away, I can see some substantial damage to the box and the packing tape holding it closed was barely hanging on by the time it arrived at my doorstep. But the griddle itself seemed undamaged, so I guess I can't complain about that too much. Packaged in the box along with the griddle is an instruction booklet and the small stainless steel drip tray that goes underneath. The flat top came with a splotchy coating of oil applied at the factory, and I wiped off some of that excess oil before doing anything else. I did notice what appears to be a scratch or blemish in the griddle surface but it doesn't feel like anything, and I can't imagine it's really anything to worry about. The illustrated instruction booklet is short but sweet, and provides the basic instructions for use, cleaning, and also the manufacturer's recommendations for the flat top's first use, which also involves seasoning the steel. Now, this flat top should work with any ordinary gas range, but I'll mention that my style of gas range is particularly well suited for it. It has five burners that cover all four corners and the center, and it also has this center grate which can be removed for easy placement of the drip tray. If you have a style of grate that simply can't have the middle removed, you can still use the drip tray, but you'll probably want to line part of the center grate with some foil so it doesn't get covered in grease that's dripping down from the griddle above. Setting up the flat top is as easy as placing it on top of the stove grates. Following the instruction booklet, I turned on all the burners to a somewhat low heat. You want to heat the flat top evenly and slowly, apparently to prevent any possibility of warping the steel over time. For its first use in seasoning, the manufacturer recommends heating the griddle up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This took a little fine tuning with the stove knobs and I'm sure I'll figure out the sweet spot after a couple uses. Being that the different burners put out different sized flames, I need to turn some up higher than others to achieve a uniform 300 degrees across the entire cooktop. I found it difficult to get it right at that 300 degree mark, so I just did the best I could. It's advised that after bringing the flat top up to temperature, it should then be left alone for 15 minutes. 
At this point, it calls for applying another thin coat of cooking oil to the entire surface before cooking anything. So that's what I did. And also, per the instructions, the first use slash seasoning of this flat top is best done by cooking a whole bunch of something that's really high in fat. They specifically recommended bacon, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I fried up about a pound and a half of thick cut bacon. At 300 degrees, the first slices were already ready to turn by the time I finished laying down the last slices. They cooked nice and even, and definitely produced enough bacon grease to coat this entire flat top. I'll note that the bacon seemed to cook faster and more evenly than pretty much any thick cut bacon I've cooked in frying pans. I don't need it to cook fast, but I was a little surprised on how fast this was, especially without anything burning or even coming close to doing so. After turning off the heat and letting the flat top begin to cool, I used my trusty Hell's Handle scraper to scrape the excess grease into the drain holes. It turns out I don't especially love this feature. I understand that having a conventional grease channel along the front of the griddle like commercial flat tops would have isn't realistic with this range top home version. That grease has to go somewhere and I think they came up with a reasonable enough idea of how to manage that on a home kitchen range. But it was almost impossible not to make a mess, and the bit of bacon gunk didn't really even want to fit through those little holes. I just sort of ended up scraping most of those bits into some paper towel and getting rid of them that way. After letting the griddle cool completely, I was able to move it out of the way and assess just how much of a mess I had on my hands. Not really to any surprise, there was grease spatter pretty much everywhere. Basically, anywhere within the spatter radius had a pretty substantial oil slick. The upper part of the range that contains the control panel seems to have gotten it the worst, but the adjacent countertop and even some of the floor had their fair share of grease as well. All in all, it was a decent sized mess, but nothing that kitchen degreasing spray cleaner and some paper towels couldn't take care of. I don't love the idea of creating this much mess every time I use the flat top, but I have to imagine that cooking a mountain of bacon is about as bad as it gets as far as spattering grease goes. All things considered, I really do like this thing. I'm glad I got it, and I'm looking forward to cooking all sorts of delicious things on it. After having used it, and cleaned up after it, here are my impressions, categorized into what I like about it, and what I don't especially like about it. What I like. It's a heavy, durable flat top. That's what I was looking to buy, and that's what I got. This thing is a substantial chunk of metal with exceptionally clean-looking seams. It couldn't possibly slide around on the stove, which was something I was a little concerned with when shopping for a stovetop griddle, but this 30-pound monster isn't going anywhere. It covers the entire surface area of my stove. I looked at a lot of models from a lot of different manufacturers, and there were a few that I really liked but so many of them were only about two-thirds of the size of a full range top. Lots appear to be made to fit on various size barbecues or maybe part or half of a gas range, but not many are designed specifically for an entire kitchen range top. It heats and cooks evenly, and I had no real problems with sticking, even with this relatively unseasoned surface. That part will only improve over time, as the seasoning further develops each time I use it. The price. Now, this thing isn't super cheap, but considering that it's a heavy slab of stainless steel, I wouldn't really expect it to be. What with the price of such materials these days? Considering the weight, the size, and the craftsmanship, I think this flat top is priced just about right. It's made in America. What's not to like about that? The company, as well as their parent company and other brands, seem like a good group that makes solid products in the United States. What I don't especially like. The mess. This is by far my least favorite thing about using the flat top. But this is just going to be the nature of the beast with a large flat top griddle in a residential kitchen. 
I'm not in a commercial kitchen with massive vent hoods and stainless steel surround, and a whole bunch of sizzling meat is gonna spatter. This is not a downfall of this model. This is simply a downfall of using a huge flat top on my kitchen stove. The drain holes and drip tray. It's a little clumsy trying to scrape the grease and crud into these holes, and they're also quite a bit of a pain to clean. I don't really know exactly how it could be improved considering, again, that this is a home grade griddle being used on a regular kitchen range. Maybe just having a full rectangular cutout here instead of these small holes would be preferable. I sort of wish it had higher sidewalls. I'm not entirely sure what difference this would really make, but I feel like I would be more comfortable if the barrier between hot grease and my floor was just a little taller. Something I liked about a lot of the other brands I looked at is that they have much higher walls on the back and sides. I will mention that Steelmade does make a pro version of this flat top that has thicker steel and higher walls. I really did consider buying that model, but for the extra $120, I guess I'm just not sure if it's worth it for me. All in all, I'm very happy with this purchase, and I know I'll cook a million things on this flat top for years to come. And if you want to check it out on the Steelmade website, I'll put a link to it in the video description below. Well, there you have it. That's the Steelmade gas range full-size flat top. You know, going into this, I expected that it was going to be pretty messy, frying up all that thick bacon, and boy, I was not wrong. Hopefully in the future, I'm not making quite so much spattery bacon or whatnot all at once and the mess won't be quite as bad. But as for now, I've got quite a bit of cleanup to do on that range and even maybe on the floor around the range. I will say that it worked exactly as it was supposed to and it fried up a pretty good strip of bacon. So I know I'll get the hang of this thing the more I use it. I'll figure out the exact settings for my dials on the different size burners and I intend to feature this uh, steel made flat top in plenty of future videos cooking up all sorts of delicious stuff. So that's about it. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay up to date with all our latest stuff including lots of new cooking videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here in the Great Lakes Kitchen.